Hi everyone, welcome to the first lecture in uh, this new series, Newpedia. Uh, it's about necrotizing pneumonia in children. So, taking a, a, a little bit of a history regarding this condition. So, uh, necrotizing pneumonia was first described uh, in 1940s in severe pneumonia uh, with adults. And 50 years later, it has been uh, described in uh, a case series of four patients um, in 1994. However, uh, the individual case reports uh, and small case series are quite limited, uh, as well as the randomized control trials. The underlying disease mechanisms are poorly uh, understood maybe due to the limited data, but we think it might be contributed to multiple host susceptibility um, or bacterial infection, uh, uh, bacterial virulence factors basically, and viral bacterial interactions. The uh, development of uh, necrosis, uh, liquefaction, and cavitation of the lung parenchyma from an infectious pathogen can be also uh, the causative mechanism. Uh, so uh, the, it's, um, it's happening in nearly 4% of the uh, community acquired pneumonia and mainly in children less than 5 years old. Uh, some retrospective studies showed high incidence uh, over the last 20 years and uh, one American study showed uh, a threefold increment uh, from 3.7 in 100,000 to 10.3 uh, just over a 10, 10 years period. The uh, common pathogens uh, usually are those for the community acquired pneumonia, uh, with nearly two thirds uh, of uh, uh, these cases can be caused by pneumococci. Uh, the um, staph aureus can cause up to 23% uh, and that can include 15 MRSA strains. Uh, there is a single case report of a fungal cause for necrotizing pneumonia. Uh, severe adenovirus pneumonia can be rarely uh, associated or a, a sole cause for the necrotizing pneumonia. However, we think that the viral uh, 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 causes or pathogens can be associated with complicating the bacterial uh, uh, causes. Be interesting. So um, uh, the uh, necrotizing pneumonia is basically is a, a spectrum between the abscess and gangrene, pulmonary abscess and gangrene. Uh, we think that the pulmonary inflammation alveolar consolidation uh, are the main pathology, but there is another thing here, which is the thrombosis of intrapulmonary vessels. Uh, and we think this thrombosis can lead to a decreased antibiotic concentration within the affected lung tissue. Uh, and this, this consequently will lead to persistent infection and further destruction of the pulmonary tissue. There's uh, the interleukin-8 also. We think it's linked to the intense separation and can contribute to tissue injury and destruction. The clinical presentation will show you basically clinical features of pneumonia, a prolonged pneumonia not responding to antibiotic therapy uh, for 72 hours. And it's mainly affecting children less than five years and in up to 100% can be associated with empyema. Uh, some Taiwanese studies showed rare association with hemolytic uremic syndrome, uh, syndrome. And the main key uh, clinical presentation also that there could be uh, a rapid deterioration even over 24 hours with severe sepsis. The um, radiographic diagnosis, uh, basically, of this condition, uh, uh, the CT scan, we think, is the gold standard and the main uh, diagnostic radiological investigation. Uh, also sonography, uh, but if it's associated with a color Doppler, uh, so it can detect, basically, the hypoperfused regions of the lungs. Mm. And there's some studies which have showed good correlation between CT scan results and 
the uh, uh, ultrasound uh, in diagnosis necrotizing pneumonia. The chest x-ray also will show you uh, uh, the consolidation like any other pneumonia, but it can show you also some cavitation like what we see, what we're going to see in the next few x-rays. So in this picture, this is actually a two years old child uh, who presented with um, a history of four days only of cough and fever. So we can see the top left x-ray showing you a mid-zone uh, uh, consolidation. Uh, the interesting thing uh, that the next x-ray was within only 24 hours and it show you, uh, shows you the um, a massive pleural effusion. Uh, uh, and the, you can see the ultrasound here showing you the pleural effusion, which is the black area here, and the surrounding heterogeneous, heterogeneous uh, echo texture, which is basically the necrotizing pneumonia. And the last x-ray here is after removing the chest drain, but it can show you the remnant cavities here, as we see. These images were for a 14 years old child who presented again with a similar history and it show you clearly the consolidation and it can show you also some evidence here of cavitation here in uh, x-ray b there's also the ct scan which can show you clearly necrotic areas with cavities here and that can be also confirmed by the ultrasounds here the laboratory diagnosis might be challenging really because nearly 144 or nearly half of the children up to 100 percent might have received antibiotics before hospitalization and uh, which in one study actually reduced the positive culture results from 64 percent in those uh, without antibiotics to 22 percent only so it's only one fifth of the children might show you a positive culture uh, because they had uh, received antibiotics before the hospitalization. So uh, molecular testing also can play an important role in this uh, uh, condition, uh, uh, basically trying to detect the um, uh, anti-pneumococcal antigen. And the, uh, the other thing here uh, is the baseline bloods which might show you increased white cell count and increased CRP and also mild to moderate anemia with hypoalbuminemia. The pleural fluids, as we said previously, pneumococcal antigen results might help in case if there is no available organism. The differential diagnosis uh, 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 will be uh, actually the lung abscess mainly. All causative agents or all causative uh, uh, um, uh, problems that might lead to lung abscess. And that's really important to differentiate because the treatment will differ. The management bit here. So the main items of the management will be managing the oxygen requirement and the uh, maintaining the ventilation and also trying to reduce the intrathoracic pressure in case if there is any kind of pleural effusion. But the cornerstone of this management will be the antibiotics. So speaking about the antibiotics, what will be the best antibiotics to start with? It will be the same as for the empyema. You need to cover the gram-positive organisms like pneumococci, staph aureus, staph pyogenes. However, you might have to tailor this uh, uh, regime uh, if you have a microbiological results. Uh, for example, if you have like MRSA, uh, so basically you might need to add vancomycin to treatment and this is add vancomycin because the monotherapy of vancomycin have to up to 20% of failure rate. So we still need to include a beta-lactam uh, anti-staph in the treatment. The uh, linozolid, clindamycin, rifampicin might show uh, better results but we have uh, like uh, low evidence for that. 
we need also to think if it's a mycoplasma pneumonia, we might need to start uh, IV clarithromycin and erythromycin. In children who are unimmunized or immunocompromised, we need to cover the gram negative uh, uh, bit, which is mainly Haemophilus influenza type B. And this antibiotic treatment might last up to 43 days. So the question is, uh, when can we switch from IV to oral antibiotics? Uh, so basically, if the child become afebrile, no signs of sepsis, and if the respiratory distress is resolving, the enteral feeds also should be tolerated because you're giving oral antibiotics, so you need to make sure that also the enteral uh, feeds are tolerated. And also inflammatory markers should be declining so um, uh, at this point the antibiotics might need to continue for another 10 to 2 weeks sorry 10 days to 2 weeks the surgical management we recommend that the surgical management or intervention should be kept to the minimum uh, so the first uh, thing is the chest tube drainage if you have like large pleural effusion or and the other option is intrapleural fibrinolytics if we have like loculated empyema and this will be through the chest tube tube the other option will be the thoracic surgery or mini thoracotomy and that will be used mainly to deprive bio biogenic material around the lungs for decortication breaking down the loculation and also removing pus uh, if required the uh, segmental or lob lobar resection uh, is, is rarely required really as well as the pneumonectomy uh, it might be indicated if, you, if we have massive hemoptysis or large or multiple tension pneumatoceles uh, or a pulmonary gangrene where the cavities or subsequent abscesses are more than 50% of the involved loop size luckily the death is rare However, we might need to consider other foci of infection like osteomyelitis, septic arthritis, infective endocarditis in case of still having persistent fever or ongoing respiratory distress or uh, sustained elevation of the inflammatory markers. However, the, usually the hospital stay will last from 12 to 30 days. It could be longer if surgery required. However, there's a good clinical and radiographic uh, and functional recovery which uh, can be achieved in five to six months thank you very much please feel free to write your comments below this video and also please find the uh, references below uh, this video thank you very much